So Carolyn, I wanted you to join us because you've done so much research on what millennials care about in this particular election. And one of those things is gender equality. So I'm so curious how the community is reacting to uh, the surfacing of this tape of, of Donald Trump talking about groping a woman over the weekend, as well as the, the pre and post debate conversation around it. I think the debate was a surprise. We saw, we ran a focus group this morning, we're running another LAVO survey this week to understand the pre and post debate reactions, but the sentiment that we're receiving is, where were millennials in this debate? Where were the issues that we care about? How was this the debate that we had after the 48 hours of information mm -hmm. that came out over the weekend? It was a surprise to everybody and not a good one. So what do millennials care about? So millennials care about economic issues, number one, and they care about them more than some of the social issues or some of the international issues that have come up over the course of the election. So in particular, student loan debt and um, gender equality in the workplace, so closing the pay gap is, is coming up as the most important thing. So, Biz, what was your reaction to the debate? Um, well, we had it on my wife's computer while we were cooking dinner, so I didn't <laughs> catch everything. Um, my what I said to my wife right after it ended was that seemed like a middle school argument. Mm -hmm. I mean, I heard like, I, I just got bits of it, but it was like, you groped women, you deleted emails. No, you groped women, no, you deleted emails. And I was like, what is this? Are these supposed, was one of these people gonna be the president? And this is what they're talking about? Um, but my wife did say that Hillary actually said a lot of smart stuff. Um, <laughs> she was paying more attention. Um, so, Caroline, you know, there's been a lot of talk about this particular election being a race to the bottom, and I wonder how is the how are younger voters reacting to that, given that they're what like 31 percent of the electorate, but not all of them vote. Exactly. So, so both candidates need their vote. So we're in this really interesting position because if you look at the numbers, millennials are now equal to baby boomers in terms of voting in this election. So millennials and baby boomers are about 31% of the electorate, 69 million people. The question is, will millennials turn out and vote to the right. same extent as baby boomers Because the old folks, do? they vote, right? They vote. Yeah. Traditionally, they vote about 20 percentage points more than millennials. So when we ran our LAVO survey, we found that in our community of young professionals, 93% were planning on voting. Mm -hmm. And the 7% who were not planning on voting stated that they weren't voting because there wasn't a candidate worth voting for, end of quote. Mm. So we're feeling optimistic about millennials in the context of this election, but what's fascinating is that we are becoming the majority of the electorate and we're becoming the majority of the workforce during the term of this next president. This is a president who needs to be able to engage millennials and needs to be able to affect change on issues that millennials care about. Now, big night for Twitter, as we mentioned, yeah. and uh, I'm curious, you know, both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have used Twitter to yeah. great effect. <laughs> right. All Cur politicians use Twitter. Well, curious how you've watched that, because some people, some people claim that Twitter and Silicon Valley created Donald Trump or gave him uh, a platform that obviously he, he wouldn't have had a decade yeah. ago. Well, from what I understand, he's always been sort of manipulative with, like, gossip Columnists and everything, and getting his name out there all the time, getting getting them to write things about him that he wants, and push the right buttons. You know, um, I think he's one of those guys that um, I recommend. You know, don't tweet while you're drunk. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, or some some people just shouldn't tweet. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, it ha like you said, it's become sort of part of woven into the fabric of this, and, and now these tweets are big deals. Like, um, it, 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 one tweet can make a whole news cycle. How, uh, how is Twitter, how is social media impacting younger voters? Yeah, it's not just Twitter either, right? Right, right. I think it's allowing for, obviously, a real-time conversation that opens up the floodgates. It's a positive thing overall from, from where I'm standing. I, it also allows us to better understand this group of voters who is already underrepresented in this election. So I'm all for the social media conversation continuing to amplify. If you take a step back and you look at yesterday's debate, where were the millennials? Mm. Where were the millennials in the audience? Where were the millennials asking questions? Where were the questions that are related to the topics that we've proven time and time again, the millennial electorate, who's now equal to baby boomers as the largest group, care about? It They're was on Twitter. just surprising me. I do, I agree with Carolyn. The, what, what's great about 
Twitter during the elections, I mean during the uh, debates, mm -hmm. is uh, is that people get to argue with each other that mm -hmm. who normally wouldn't be able to argue with each other, and you know minds can get changed and and br points can be brought up that mm -hmm. aren't being brought up on yeah. the debates, and that's what's great about it. Um, and other social media, whatever whatever you can use, whatever tools you can use to sort of um, get in there with other folks is great. Silicon Valley, a lot of people in Silicon Valley, save one, uh, have come out yeah. <laughs> effusively supporting Hillary Clinton and very much against Donald Trump. What are your thoughts? Which candidate is better for innovation? I think it's fascinating, and I'll take the position of representing the millennial electorate overall, that there was no conversation about technology yesterday. There was no tie-in to Silicon Valley. There was no tie-in to innovation. I'd like to see more of that in the next few weeks, and but I think it's critical. Do you have a choice? Do you have a candidate that you prefer? I'm here representing the millennial vote overall, so sharing that survey data. Because I know you'll tell me what you think. <laughs> well, I, uh, I usually stay uh, out of public politics. It kind of came from my early days at Twitter of maintaining a Switzerland-like stance for mm -hmm. the whole company. But this time around, I do believe there's a wrong choice. Believe me. <laughs> believe me. And a right choice. Um, and uh, and Ooh, I would like, and I right. would, and I think, I think um, a woman president would be, um, first of all, obviously historic, mm -hmm. but also I think it would help um, change the way Americans think about women in the workplace, mm -hmm. and and that goes, and it goes all the way back to. Um, uh, education, early childhood education. I work with DonorsChoose.org a lot, and um, you know, little girls are traditionally pushed towards the, the arts, mm -hmm. um, humanities, and these sorts of things. But that's starting to change uh, into science and math and, and so forth. And I think, I just think having a, a woman president um, would be a step in the right direction. That sounds like a vote for Hillary Clinton. It does.